Alrighty guys, can you see some surfers? The surfers, look, right there, surfers behind me. So I'm recording this on the beach. I think this is called Tawan Beach. It's Tuesday night. I've been here since yesterday and this is my week on vegan junk food. I don't know whether you can hear me because the surf is up, the surf is up. So yeah, so I started yesterday morning. As I'm talking, I'll put some photographs up of what I've been eating. If you've been following me on Twitter and Instagram, you'll have seen these pieces of <laughs> vegan deliciousness already. So follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dr. MSH Low. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling really fat. I'm gonna tell you, right? I don't know people live on junk food all the time. I had um, the Viva La Vegan Burger from Frankie and Benny's. It was recommended to me when it was new. I think I think there's a, it, there's a really big vegan menu actually at uh, Frankie and Benny's. I think it was 20 new items to put on in January for Veganuary and they're still there. So there's laws of choice, but a student recommended uh, the Viva La Vegan Burger to me. So I tucked in with uh, uh, fries with vegan cheese on. Absolutely delicious, but full of sodium full of fat and I'm really not digesting it guys and then after that we found a little cafe called Wendy's right near the beach and um, they did vegan ice cream and vegan sorbet and I had a, a fruity sundae with vegan whipped cream absolutely delicious but sitting down watching Toy Story for an hour and a half I've not digested a thing so I'm walk, trying to walk off a little bit next to these weird little rocks there's, there's like caves and everything there's caves and little gullies it's amazing that the power of the sea did all this there's caves around the other side uh, but this morning um, the, the tide was out so if we go this way what we could do this morning we can walk around this rock and there's a little beach around the other side and there's another beach around another set of rocks and they're all connected and uh, what there is on these rocks or what there was this morning I took a little video of it so I'll show you the video as I'm talking where loads and loads of mussels you know like the bivalve mussels not, not mussels as in mussels I mean mussels as in the little bivalves and there was thousands of them I mean literally thousands of them all attached to these rocks Right, all the way along, thousands and thousands of them, all stuck to the rocks. And it got me thinking, right, and it has been debated whether bivalves are sentient and whether actually eating oysters and mussels and things like that, if they're not sentient, why not eat them and get, you know, just a little bit of extra nutrition, right? They've got some minerals in or whatever. So... I looked up mussels on chronometer and one medium sized mussel is apparently 14 calories. So you'd have to eat quite a few of the mussels, you'd have to pull off quite a few of those mussels off the rocks over there, right? You'd have to pull loads off to get an adequate meal, wouldn't you? You know, you'd be looking at 20, 30, 40, 50, depending on how hungry you were but what I was thinking about is why would somebody right you know they're all attached to the rocks they just look like rocks until you get really close up to them who was the first person the first human being who decided to eat them because they just look like rocks they look nothing like food right absolutely the least thing Right, there's a, there's a rock here, right, the, I mean, right, even if you were starving, you were starving, starving, something that looks like a pebble or a rock, you wouldn't think about eating it. Now I suppose I've just seen some gulls over there, and gulls will eat them, so maybe, maybe early humans who were, because no one can tell me that bivalves are the natural diet of the human being, right, of homo sapiens. 
So maybe when humans were in transit and they were striding out and they followed the coastlines, uh, a lot of the time through, for, for evolution they followed the coastlines. What about those periods where you couldn't fish, right? Maybe, you know, you couldn't get far enough out to sea because it was rough like this and you were wandering across the coastline and you, maybe you saw a seagull eating a bivalve and you decided, well, if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for it. What period would somebody, one of our ancestors say, yeah, I'm going to eat that? Because they look nothing like food to me, guys. Absolutely nothing like food to me. So who, who would want to eat them? Who would want to eat them? They're horrible, right? Just leave them on the rocks. So I've seen mussels before, right? I live in the north of England and I don't live too far away from the coastline. But you don't, because we don't have rocky cliffs like this in the north, like our beaches are really, really flat, like Southport's really, really flat. You don't see, you see a few washed up, but you don't see thousands and thousands and thousands of them. So I've never really thought about that before. But I'll double down my efforts to say no, right? We shouldn't be eating those things. I don't care whether they're sentient or not. They've got a life and they're clinging on. They're clinging on to those rocks for dear life, waiting for the tide to come in. On that note, guys, I'm going to go up there to the top of the cliff. It's a beautiful, beautiful evening here on Tawan Beach and uh, guys I'll speak to you soon later, bye